Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to FTB Beyond. So, I am very happy to say that the server lag has been 100% addressed. So, what I found out through some very complex lag busting was twofold. First off, we had a major problem with the Draconic Evolution Tier 8 Energy Orbs. Or whatever you want to call those things. It, it, Draconic Evolution, it's their batteries. Let's just take a look here. It takes a whole gob of these awakened draconium blocks and a whole bunch of draconium blocks. And then it's got energy pylons and a whole bunch of other garbage. And I mean, they're, they're just massively huge pieces of crap. But Apache had two of those in his base. And that was what was causing the server lag. Now that in and of itself was not the only problem that we ran across. So the other issue was with the walls of his base. And actually, if we go there, I kind of show you what I'm talking about. So we'll go ahead and head to spawn. And all of a sudden we will notice two things here first. And we might do a server rollback to undo this. First off, you can see there's no windows here in Apache's base. So I don't really like that. That was chisels and bits, and I tried removing chisels, chisels and bits to see if that was an issue. Also, you can see I removed the, the basketball hoop on the Batani area, but yeah, I kind of want that gone anyway. But if we go downstairs here, we can see this is where Apache had the en energy spheres. And this is how many blocks are con contained in each one. This includes the core stabilizers and the charging pylons and all of that stuff. Well, he had two of these. So that's what was causing the lag and causing the server to fall way behind. Now the other issue was a graphical issue. I believe it was only client side, but you notice that the walls are now very dim and they're not the nice bright white materials that they were before. Well, his walls were painted glowstone. I removed all of the stuff off the walls with the exception of little tiny areas that were inset in and it's 10,050 painted glowstone. Now there's more painted glowstone down here still. The floor is also painted glowstone. However, it is not causing any issues anymore. So, yeah, I'm very happy to say that. We eliminated the problem. I know that Apache is probably not going to be overly thrilled about not being able to have his walls be so nice and bright, but eh, quite frankly, I, I don't see an issue with it. Now, another thing that he uh, did here, and he was a little concerned about this causing some lag, was this. It is just a huge array of torches in between the floors here. And he is utilizing the lighting glitch of torches to illuminate his floors as well as the ceiling down here and now that actually does not cause any server lag it may cause a little bit of fps issues but it's not going to cause any server lag because the torches only cause updates when they are placed so yeah that's a commonly held misconception that torches cause lag they don't they may cause block updates when they're placed in, but they don't cause lag. But I am really thrilled that I got that all straightened out. So we can now head back to our base. And I think it is time to start setting some stuff up here. Now, another thing, I went ahead and put all of my smooth stone back into a Yaba barrel. And that is because I figured out that even though we did have some Yaba barrels that were glitched out, once they were broken, they could be replaced and there was no issue. 
So there was something in the NBT data or something with the ALBA barrels that we had on the server that caused them to glitch out. And once they were broken, stored, server restarted, and then replaced down, now they're fine. So yeah, that is wonderful. But so what I think I'm going to do now, I am going to pull pretty much all of this stuff down. I'm going to start rearranging it in a method that uh, has a little bit more sense to it. You know, get all of the power generation stuff together, all of the applied energistic stuff together, and try to get it to where our various uh, machines are running in a bit more intelligent fashion too. Because right now, yeah, I have a bit of an issue here. I've got ME interfaces dumping items into chests that are going into various machinery. And there's chances that the wrong items can go in together because in this alloy smelter, we can have three items at once. So yeah, that's a bit of an issue. But so uh, yeah, I have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna get to that and I will see you guys after a little bit. Well, it has been a rather lengthy process, but I've gotten everything moved. I actually moved my applied energistic system over here closer to the edge of where I've been filling. And that is because my plan is to have a path running through this area for the entrance to the Dwarven area. And I want this to be just inside the Dwarven area. But so I went through here and got all of my auto crafting set back up. I have color coded my crafting system so, or my ME system so that I can have all of this set up and figure out what is what. I also got four of these crafting setups now. So that's good. I'm also up to 16 of the molecular assemblers, so I'm getting a lot of capacity here. Now, on the inscriber setup, Apache recommended I try this advanced inscriber. Now, this thing works exactly like the regular applied energistics inscriber, except that it has the ability to have five acceleration cards in it and it will take entire stacks. So I think I want to replace all of these inscribers with that. So I'm just gonna start with this one here. Now this one does the silicon. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at this. So this is uh, AE2 stuff, and we have the advanced inscriber. Pattern encoder. I wonder if that one's capable of encoding patterns without having to have the items in your inventory. That would be kind of nice. But this is the recipe for that. It's just two hoppers, two engineering processors, an inscriber, and four ingots. So let's just see. It looks like we have everything. So we'll go ahead and bring this over here. And so the way that this is working, if it's working, so we will put the silicon press in here. And what I've got going on here with this is I have an interface here on the back that has the pattern for each of the three processors. Now we can see the pattern contains one silicon, one redstone, and then either a pure certus crystal, a uh, gold ingot, or a diamond. So it places those three items in this chest and they are pulled out by the Ender IO conduit. So in each of the connections here, I have the majority of these set to in and out. And on the insert side, we have a basic item filter. So like for this one, we have the silicon in here. So let's go ahead and make a whole bunch of processors. Let's see how many we have of each one. Not a whole heck of a lot. So let's go ahead and make 32 of the logic processors. And uh, yeah, this is even going to require some gold to be processed. So this is really gonna cause the machinery to roar to life. So uh, we'll see over here, we're processing our gold. 
and uh, here in just a little bit we should see there's the stuff going in there and multiple items of the silicon can go in here now I forgot to set that to always active so now it pulls the silicon out of there and puts it into this one so we're still waiting on the process or the the printed circuit and so what is going on why oh whoops because I set that to the wrong one I need to go over here and set it to always active there we go so now this should be doing that why are you not working what it's why um i don't know what's going on there why is this not extracting those it will extract them oh active with the signal we want it always active there we go that <laughs> wow I, I am really fumbling around here, but you can see instead of one item at a time, we can put an entire stack of items in these, and they are incredibly fast. We're actually making them faster than the simple import bus back here can pull them in. So, uh, yeah, we just basically what we do is we put our raw materials into this chest and eventually. Our, bait, or our completed processors will be up here in this inscriber and then pulled back into the system. So that works really good. I need to replace these three with these advanced inscribers as well. And that will really make things nice. Now, I have uh, the pulverizer set up here and I want to get this upgraded to Enderium now that we have that available. And then I have a whole bank of alloy smelters and each of these has one recipe then we have our sawmill then our induction smelter and this is using blazing pyrothium why do we have a gold ingot in there I don't know we'll go ahead and drop it in there but uh, something turned goofy there but so we have our magma crucible here making pyrothium dust into blazing pyrothium that gets put into the induction smelter and that gives us a high return when run with sand or uh, whatever slag and even a higher yield I believe with cinnabar and then finally we have our redstone furnace here and this one is doing nothing but glass now this is one that I really like so this guy is updated to resonant and I've put four auxiliary reception coil uh, augments in that so let's take a look at our glass now before I had glass constantly smelting well guess what let's melt a hundred glass so we go in here and look and look at how fast this is cooking those i think that was well worth the stuff there but so i've been trying to keep everything that i need loaded kept within a single chunk so the edge of these crafting interfaces here is the edge of a chunk so this furnace is outside of the chunk and then there is a chunk boundary here too so this entire line of machines is out of the chunk but so we can load two chunks now and have our entire crafting and power system set up now i have this is ridiculous we have four solar panel eights and uh yeah we we just have so much power here it's not even funny now why what why are you guys not inputting maybe because this needs to be set to input yeah that might make a bit of a difference 
so yeah I was running that without even having power going into it wow and I ran it for a long time like that but so I still have a few more things to kind of get set up the next one that I want to set up is this tectonic initiator now this goes in a pulverizer and we are going to upgrade this pulverizer to enderium right away so let's go ahead and get our upgrades we'll get these guys crafted we already have the iron or the hardened one we'll craft one of each of these and the best part is is that uh, if it needs something like this one's going to need enderium and enderium base and so that stuff just does what it needs to right away so oh and there's wandering one that is great so let's go ahead and say hi to him but so yeah the crafting system is working really good but we're gonna get this set up here in just a bit so let's take a look at our upgrades that should be done um no we're not quite ready yet no 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 cancel that upgrades and the nice part is is we can even watch our crafting status from this thing ah. I did not mean to do that so we're still waiting on the enderium ingots let's go ahead and put the signalum down here and come on let's go hurry 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 still not there 70 80 yeah we're getting closer all right upgrades there we go there's our resonant one so we're gonna make a resonant conversion kit this will take it up immediately so uh, I'm also out of these ender energy conduits and that kind of stinks so we're gonna have to use a regular energy conduit here these guys don't connect to each other oh okay well what does it take to make those uh, conduits so these guys here conduit binder and vibrant we could update these now I think what we'll do is we will just make some of the ender conduit directly so there we go didn't realize I had so much vibrant al alloy new ore miner GG all right so there we go finally we have this thing set up powered we're gonna update it and then we're going to drop in this tectonic initiator now what this does is it will give us if we take a look at the uses on this it will give us huge returns on various items if we get it tectonic petrothium so the reason that I want this one is this here diamond ore with tectonic petrothium gives us three diamonds this is the best result you can get anywhere in the mod pack for diamonds fortune 3 gives us an average of 2.2 diamonds so that is what we need now what we need next is to make that petrothium and to do that we'll take a look at the uses on this to do that we need a magma crucible and we need to uh, melt petrothium dust the petrothium dust is made with obsidian dust clay redstone and basal's powder now we can make this stuff in a pulverizer but we can also make it with a fluid transposer so we can take obsidian dust and add destabilized redstone and that will make this stuff so I have a whole bunch of machines to set up here oh joy I am loving that and while I'm at it I might move these guys over and put them a couple of blocks over this way so that we can still only load two chunks and have everything working yeah I think I'm gonna do that so I've got a whole bunch of 
machines to set up and then I'll be back well a whole bunch more machines here now so I got my furnace and the pulverizer moved over here the pulverizer is now full of tectonic petrothium so that is nice we still need to get some additional reception coil augments in here that'll make that thing go a little faster I've got my magma crucible here it is making the tectonic petrothium now to craft that stuff of course we need to be able to apply redstone to stuff now we don't just need to apply redstone for this basalt pot powder we also need it for blizz powder and I believe there's others as well so if we look at the recipe on this some of the other stuff that this will make it'll turn glowstone into blaze diamonds into flux uh, crystals it'll fill redstone energy conduits and we've got the basals the blizz blitz putting it on sand hmm. uh, fluxed electrum buckets of destabilized redstone of course bunch of different storage things so yeah there's a few things here and we can also make signalum flux ducts here and these carry 16,000 RF a tick it's actually not too bad but these guys here carry an awful lot more but so we can now set up any recipes that require destabilized redstone and also this tectonic petrothium we can use that for any of these 15 pages of recipes as well so we've got gold iron coal mm, sodalite no thank you peridot no nope. tungsten no 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 these are all kind of looking no no even though the iridium that would be really nice with iridium but i don't know what our chances of iridium ore are i haven't seen any in the whole time that i've been here three sirs quartz not bad yeah that's not a bad one at all i don't know if there's anything with oh appetite 13 of them i think we get more than that from the pulverizer three draconium dust i think that's pretty bad in comparison to fortune three pulverized platinum with a five percent chance of pulverized iridium not bad do the same thing with the nickel and get a chance for the pulverized platinum nice so there's a few few nice recipes here it work really good on emerald ore too considering that we have no emerald so yeah that's what we've got with this so now here's what I'm going to do I've got the recipe set up here in the pattern terminal one diamond ore three diamonds let's go ahead and grab that we're gonna place this into our uh, interface and now let's go ahead and make some diamonds So let's go here and we will make 1,000 diamonds. So there it goes. Making diamonds. We've already made 192? No way. There is no way that we've made that many already. Unless it's 260. It's like, what? Oh, that's how much ore we still have to go. Well, this is going to be running for quite some time. But yeah, we've got a whole bunch of stuff here now that is all automated. It's set up in a better configuration than it was before. And we still get those occasional lag spikes. I have no idea what causes those. I'm sure it has to do with the fact that I am running the server on the same computer that I am playing, 
But this is a very nice thing to see. So, yeah. Got all of that running. We'll be able to set up tons and tons of recipes now for various things that we need to do. And we can continue on with our build. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you are happy about me being here in the FTV Beyond server, let me know down in the comments. If you got something that you'd like to see me work on, leave that down below as well, and I will see you next time. Bye! Glitchy, glitchy, glitchy!